Hello ladies and gentlemen, so I've just started my game and, well I don't know what to do. I'm guessing that I pressed the W key to walk forward, so I'm guessing I moved the mouse to look around, la di da 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 But there's no visual indication at the start of the game to tell you how to play it. So that's what we're going to do today. Today we are going to create a visual indicator on the screen that will allow you to tell the player the controls and as they complete them it marks it as done. For this we're going to be using the narrative quest system and it's such a good use effect for it. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we need to modify our HUD in order to actually put the text somewhere we want it. So I'm going to tap Control P and I'm going to search for my existing HUD. If you haven't got a HUD yet, all you need to do is come into your UI folder or just create a UI folder if you want to put it there and create a new user interface widget blueprint and just call it HUD. The only other thing you have to do from there is somewhere on your player, whether it's your player controller or not, just add it to the viewport so you've got access to it nice and easy. So you can see in my HUD, I've already got my press E to interact on screen controls so I'm just going to duplicate this all this is is a rich text block with a custom style that I've set up so I can have inputs and other things if you want this I'll put the tutorial in the description next I'm just going to anchor this by clicking the anchor and holding control and shift to the top of the screen because that's where I want mine to go but you can put yours anywhere customize it however you like and I'm just going to move its position down by say 50 yeah and then I'm just going to rename it to RTB for rich text box to tutorial input there we go and I'm just going to slightly rename this ever so slightly so press WASD to move around this text is just a placeholder so you can see how it'll work but yeah so we'll hit compile and save on that now I'm going to jump into my graph here and I'm going to create just the same I've done here a new custom event and this will be called hide hide tutorial input and all I'm going to do is drag in my tutorial input and just call set visibility and it'll be collapsed next I'm going to create another custom event this time it'll be show tutorial input and I'm going to drag my tutorial input in again and then this time I'm just going to do set text and then I'm going to drag the text into the show tutorial input there and just connect it up. The final thing I will copy the set visibility and just call show visible and with a little bit of tidying up and a common we now have our tutorial input section. So now we need a way to actually use it and this is the cool part of using it with narrative. So I'm going to come down into my blueprints quest folder but you can put anywhere you want and I'm going to create a new narrative quest called tutorial input. There we go. So I'm going to just remove the description because I don't need the description and the quest name I will just also remove because I don't. Then in the quest graph this is where we start building up what keys we want the user to press in order to complete the tutorial. So you can see when we drag off we currently don't have anything we can complete. Now there are a couple of ways we can do it. We could just use a narrative data task and then every time we press left and right or up and down then we complete the data task. But after a while that's going to get insanely large and I don't think that's the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do instead is open my content drawing. I'm going to go into my blueprints folder and I'm going to create a new folder here called tasks and I'll right click this and do narrative task and I'm just going to create a task here called NT for narrative task and I'm going to call it NT import wall and I'm going to open this up. So inside here I'm going to open up the override and I'm just going to go to the tick task here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my player's pawn and I'm going to cast it to whatever my main character blueprint is. In my case it's the first person character. Now from here we can actually get access to all of the components inside this player such as the character movement and then using the character movement we can get the velocity of the character so the movement and we can tell if they're moving if they are we can complete the task so I'm going to come in and I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do get velocity and then all I'm going to do is get the length of the vector and say if it's more than zero then it's true so I can add a branch and connect it up and if it is true then we can simply call complete task like so and now with this really simple way here we now have a way of detecting whether or not the players move and this tick task will run every x seconds so I'm just going to come in and say the tick interval will be every 0.2 of a second so not every frame tick but just a little bit less and as soon as it finishes it it will complete the task and close it off and stop running what I'm also going to do inside here is I'm going to click the class settings and you will see that we have a blueprint display name here so I'm going to come and call this dash task dash input wall and you'll see when we compile and save that and go to our tutorial input now our quest if I drag off of this I can now see my task input wall so I can add this here and this is going to basically wait and check to see if the player has started walking if they have it will complete this task nice and easy so I'm going to complete this and then we need a way to begin this quest so I'm going to come into the main 
main map here where I know it'll be called and I'm going to click this icon up here and I'm going to choose open level blueprint and this is where I'm going to start mine. So this is the, the blueprint for the actual map. So when the map loads this event will run and you also saw the tick option there but I don't want to use that. So as soon as the map is loaded I'm going to just add a small delay node just for like 0.1 of a second just to make sure everything else is initialized and then from the completed I'm just and I'm going to right click and get the narrative component and then I'm just going to simply call begin quest because I know this will be my first level and this is the level I want the tutorials on and I will call the tutorial input like so then I'll see when we begin it we have quest started and no task description so we don't know what to do but if I press forwards you'll see the task is now completed because it is wiped off that we've been moving the velocity so this is all good we need to tie it in to our new hood element here which is really simple to do so all I'm going to do is come to my content drawer and inside my events and I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new folder called events and then in here I'm going to right click narrative narrative event and I'll call it any toggle tutorial input so I'll override the execute event function here and then I'm just going to simply come and copy this cast to the first person character because I know I want to do that and then from here I'm going to get the hood and then this is where our first variable will come in so this is going to say if it's got some text show the tutorial input if it's not got any text don't show it so I'm going to get, go from the hood and I'm just going to call show tutorial input for now and then I'm going to promote this text to a variable like so and this is going to be the text that they want to show on the screen I'm going to take this text above this hood and I'm going to say text is empty like so I'm going to add a branch and connect it up now if the text is empty we know we want to call hide on the hood so I can drag this out and just call hide tutorial input and then I can just return from there however if it's not empty then we know we want to show it and the show will make it visible and populate its text and then I can also return from there as well like so and I can now compile and save that so coming back to our tutorial input here as soon as the quest starts I know the first task I want to show I'm going to add my custom event of toggle tutorial input I'm going to set the runtime to the start because I want it to run at the start of the event and the text will be press WASD to move and you see we can't currently see anything so I'm going to go back to my narrative event and I'm going to overwrite the function get graph display I'm going to delete the parent out and then I'm going to add a branch here and just like we did before I'm going to drag in our text and do is empty and plug it in if it's empty say to hide the tutorial input but if it's not empty then instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off the return value and do append and I will put show colon and then I'm going to drag in the text to here so what this will do is come in and say if the text is empty so we're hiding it just say hide tutorial input otherwise come down and print out what we're showing and now when I go back to the quest you will see it will say show press WSD and then once we complete this task inside the branch because we've completed it I will call the same event here but instead I'm just going to leave the text to be empty like so and I'm going to set the event runtime to the end so at the end of this branch once it's completed it will hide it but let's test it out and see what happens so you can see now it says press WSD to move I can look around I can jump it will complete it off perfect that is one simple way of doing of creating a tutorial input So now I'm going to show you a different way of doing it for a different method. So I'm going to go to my narrative tasks here and I'm going to create another narrative task inside here and I'm going to call it any import jump. I'm going to go to it. So we could easily come in and just overwrite the tick task again and check if their velocity Z is higher. But if they walk up a hill, that will also cause it to trigger. So it can get a bit flaky when you're trying to do it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the begin task here. And just like we did before, I'm going to cast my player here. And this time we need a dedicated way to tell us when the player has pressed jump. Now I'm going to come and find my jump controls here. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. All it does is call the jump or stop jumping on the character here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an event dispatcher here called on jump. And I'm going to drag this into the jump method here. And I'm just going to call it like so. And I can combine and save. So every time the player presses jump, it will toggle the jump and call our on jump event dispatcher. Normally, there'll be nothing in here, so it won't really do anything. But in my narrative input jump task, I can drag off from this and do a sign on jump jump like so and what this is going to do is assign this method and store it inside the on jump event dispatcher so every time the event on jump call then it will call our custom event which we can come and simply go complete task perfect but before we call on complete task we actually need to remove this event from the player otherwise we might run into an issue so i'm going to drag this stuff across and i'm going to promote the first person character to a variable and i'll just call it player and now that we've got it set as a variable i can come down into the on jump event here and i 
can drag our player in and I can say unbind event from on jump. Don't unbind all events because that could be a bit catastrophic if you've got other things bound to it for some reason. And then you will see all it needs is the event that we're trying to unbind. And in this case, it's going to be the event that's coiling itself. So I can drag that up there like so. So this will bind the task to the player. And then when we jump, it will remove it like so. And if I come back and just again, this to my, my quest, here we go. And just like we've done before, on the quest state here, I can the custom event toggle input. And I will say the text will be press space to jump. And then I can come over to the high tutorial input. I can copy the event and I can just add it to the branch like so. There we go. Now, if I run it again, you will see we should have two input prompts now. Press WASD to move. So I can move. Press space to jump. Jump. There we go. And that's a really basic way of doing quests. But there are a few things I don't like about it. Firstly, tutorials don't normally tell you you've begun a quest. So that's a bit weird. So let's resolve that. If you've done dialogue before, you will know it is common practice to create a master dialogue to store some variables if you need it in your game. So I'm going to come and do the exact same thing in my quest. I'm going to just create a normal quest here called master quest. That's all it'll do for now. Then I'm going to come into here and I'm going to create a variable inside here called show UI. And by default, I'm just going to tick it like so. And I'm going to cross it off. Now I'm going to come back to my tutorial input and I'm going to set the parent class, which is under class settings, to my new master quest. There we go. If I compile and save and go to class defaults, you will see we now have a show UI flag. So I'm going to untick. But at the moment, it does absolutely nothing. So this is where we need to make a few tweaks to the narrative default UI to stop it rendering the UI specifically for this quest. So I'm going to come and press control P and I'm going to search for default narrative UI. If you can't see it, make sure that you hit the cog and have show plugin and engine content. I'm just going to open up the BP default narrative UI. Inside the graph for the quest, you will see we've got a bunch of events that I used in order to make this graph show or hide. So going down the events one by one on this quest new state. So I'm just going to drag this quest box out a little bit and I'm going to grab all these events and I'm just going to move them all the way out to the side so we've got some space to play with. And on this quest here, I'm just going to simply cast it to our new master quest. So by default, it's using narrative space quest property. So now that we've casted to our quest branch here, we can successfully get our show UI boolean. And then I'm going to add a branch here. And if we are showing the UI, then true, I'm just going to connect it onto everything else. And I'm going to wrap it in a comment saying show UI modification. And now we can basically do this on all the other events, only show things. So for example, this one here, I'm going to add it in. And everywhere it's true, you can just plug it in. Of course, you can spend more time if you want, organizing it, making it look neater, etc. I'm just going to do it for speed of the tutorial. And I'm going to ignore this quest journal one because that is normally triggered manually by an individual. So as you can see, I've now added my show UI modification to every step here. There might be a better way. If you know a better way, please comment below. But now that we've done that, only if the show UI is true, then it will render the UI to the screen. So I'm going to go into my play and I'm going to play it. And you will see we now longer get no UI. Perfect. So I can move around and it will complete it. Then it'll instantly say press space to jump. So can I press jump? There we go. Our tutorial is complete. The player doesn't know it's a quest, but it does indeed work and guide them through it. You can also see that if I come in and press space straight away, then it won't count as the space has been pressed. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So that's two ways in order to show a tutorial input for the user. One, using the event tick to check the character's velocity or the is of them. You could also connect to the inventory and gather it that way. The other option is by using event dispatchers. The unfortunate side of event dispatchers is they will remain there permanently throughout the entire game. Perhaps in some games where you have a dedicated tutorial level, you can have a dedicated tutorial character which has the event sum, and then when you play the game, they won't have it anymore. So the final thing I'm going to show you now, ladies and gentlemen, is on the previous tutorial, we created a way to show dynamic text at the bottom of the screen with platform dependent input. So you can see I'm currently selected on mouse and keyboard. If I select PlayStation, it will change it to zero for the circle key. That's not fantastic if your tutorials are stuck in PC mode. So if you've watched the previous tutorial and you would like to use the same platform dependent code, we can now easily modify what we've done to action this. So I'm going to come into my graph here and I'm going to take the same code I've done here with a format and I'm just going to paste it down here. I'm going to drag the text. I'm going to so. And just like we've done up here, I am going to create an action and a control. So I'm going to rename the action, the text to be action. So it's in line. And I'm also going to rename another one to be control. Then I can plug it in just like we've done above. Like so. Then I'm going to come back to my narrative event for toggle tutorial input here. And if it's false, meaning it's not empty, then instead of just setting the text outright, instead I'm going to connect to my data table where I have stored previous controls. So I'm going to jump over to my first person character and on the event tick right at the end, I've got my get platform input text. Here. So what I can do is I can come from my first person character and I can call get platform input text. So I'm going to 
to plug this into the control function here and then I'm going to drag our text variable out and I'm just going to rename it to action and I can plug that in here. Action is what's going to happen such as jump and then the control is the key you will press. And finally for the input I can just promote this to a variable like this and we will call it input row name like set. And then the only other thing I need to do is just make sure you return otherwise you will get some issues. And now ladies and gentlemen if I come back to our tutorial input here and click on it you can see it says we need to press WSD to move. So let's change that and change it to to the move and the row name is where we now jump back to our data table for our platform controls and we start populating it. So you can see I currently don't have a row for movement so I'll add it in. I will call it movement. The control name will be movement and then this is where we can jump back to our favorite website prompt font. There we go. So I'm going to scroll down until I find a suitable WASD. So for the keyboard and mouse I'm just going to type WASD like so. For the PlayStation text I want to try and find a thumbstick. There we go. So the left thumbstick is typically the one we'll use so I'll tap that to copy it then I can come and paste it in and because it's the same on both platforms I'll just paste it into both. And now that we've done that we can copy the row name of movement and back in our quest I can simply set the row name to be movement and then it will hide it which is completely fine and then I'm just going to come and create a brand new one so you can see now our movement row name will work for the high tutorial input we're just going to leave it all as blank we can then it will hide and now we need to do another one for the jumping so I'm just going to type jump and then for the input row name I'm going to come down add a new row again called jump I will set the control name to be jump the mouse keyboard text this is where we can jump back prompt font and I can search for the space key uh, there we go then for the PlayStation uh, I will say I want the cross button and for the Xbox probably the A button there we go so we can come back to our quest now and inside the input row name I'll just type jump and there we go let's give it a go so we'll see press WSD to move so I'll move press space to jump I'll jump perfect that all works fine but if I change my first person character's default control scheme to be something else such as PlayStation and I begin it now see our tutorials will take effect of the same as we did so I'll use the left analog stick I haven't got one I'll use keyboard and press X to jump perfect there you go ladies and gentlemen so that is a bunch of ways in order to create tutorials using narrative and you can plug this into absolutely anything if you want to know when an enemy dies create an event dispatcher for on death and plug it into your health check method if you want to know when they when the player themselves die plug it into their health method if you want to know if they pick an item up or plug it into the specific item or the specific key press i hope this helps please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time